Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Reading Tools to the Rescue, Solutions for Learning on Couches and in Classrooms. My name is Laura Romberg, and I am the host of the webinar. I am the Associate Relationship Manager uh, with Bookshare, a Benetech initiative. And I'm here with two of my colleagues today, Christine Jones, who is the Associate Director for Global Literacy at Benetech, and Miranda Doyle, who is a district teacher librarian at Lake Oswego School District in Oregon. And now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Christine Jones. Thanks, Laura. It's great to be with everyone. We're going to jump right into the agenda. So today we're going to talk about the why of reading. And I know that if you're on this webinar, you're likely already passionate about reading. So in some ways, we'll be preaching to the choir here. But we're going to equip you with some information that you can share with others about the important role that reading plays in children's development and future success. We'll also look, also look at the how of reading and, and the many ways uh, that students can read and then what they can read, especially right now, we're gonna focus on digital tools. In this current climate, we see a lot of benefit to students accessing content digitally. So we'll focus on digital eBooks and tools for reading them, and then we'll take your questions. So to start out, let's talk about what's the big deal about reading. It will come as no surprise to this audience that there's a strong correlation between reading and future success. One study found that the engaged reader is also typically purposeful, intrinsically motivated, and socially interactive. Another study tells us that reading levels influence students' abilities, uh, their social abilities, especially their capacity for empathy. And also another study concluded that reading attitudes were the strongest predictors of mental well-being. Looking Farther into the future, we also know that reading levels do have a lot to do with determining future success. And a 50-year study was conducted that involved 17,000 people. And one of the conclusions was that reading well at age seven was a key factor in determining whether people went on to get a high-income job. And the reading level was also linked to their social class or status even 35 years later. So we can't overstate the importance of reading. And you might ask, well, what role can reading play in this particular learning environment with all of its unique challenges? And there's a website called World Reader, uh, whose April edition, uh, April 2020 edition had a wonderful article that really shows us how reading is now more important than ever. As with the right tools and support, reading books can be an effective way to support children, and that the science of reading reminds us that when children read or are read too frequently, they continue learning and they preserve skills learned prior to the crisis. So we love the words continuing, continuing to learn and preserving learning, especially with all of the concern about learning loss. So reading can play a big part in helping to mitigate that loss. Also, the article talks about mobile phones and what a lifeline they are for families during this time. We know that many households have, they may not have internet access at home, but they likely have a phone and it's likely a smartphone and they have a data plan. So they have the ability to access content uh, digitally. And this uh, really ensures a more leveled playing field for families, which is another reason why today we're gonna really focus on digital content and many of the tools that we're going to discuss uh, can be used on tablets and phones. So reading is, um, is a very significant uh, part of learning, we know, and a part of development. But at this, in this current climate, getting physical books into students' hands is not either possible or practical. And for some students, it's really not their ideal or preferred learning modem anyway learning mode, so they need, they need alternatives. And today we're gonna to talk about technologies that can help uh, students learn anywhere, whether they're at home or on their couches and read in ways that work for them and keep up with their assignments and, uh, and actually stay on track. So now Miranda's gonna talk about the many ways to read. Take it away, Miranda. 
Great, thank you. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how um, printed text is usually what we think of when we have students um, and we give them a book and we think of reading as you sit down in a chair, you've got your print book, you open it up and you read um, print. But I think we're starting to accept more and more that audio uh, is a great way to learn and a great way to read um, and that we can provide audio books in so many different formats. Um, and we'll show and demonstrate some of those today and talk about them. I think um, especially now during the pandemic, but um, at other times too, um, audiobooks have really been taking off. So more and more people are listening to audio, whether it's the best way they can access text or it's just another way for them to, to read. Um, other formats, things like graphic novels are also becoming much more accepted as a good way to read. So we want to make sure that our students know that there are so many different ways to read and to learn. Um, and we don't have to just look at that one traditional way. Um, and then, of course, getting ebooks to students right now is probably the easiest way to get them content. Um, libraries are doing curbside pickup, but uh, it's not always easy to get those print books out to students. So um, we're going to look at some of the options and also talk about the difference between human narrated audio, which I'll be demonstrating, so a human voice. Um, and then text to speech, which is another great way to uh, listen to content and gives you access to so much more content, things like textbooks. Great. Thank you, Miranda. All right. So I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of text to speech, and then Miranda will come back to uh, human narrated audio and demonstrate some of those. And then I'll demonstrate some text to speech tools because most of you are probably familiar with human narrated audiobooks if you uh, if you've enjoyed them yourselves or you know people who do and possibly fewer of you are familiar with text to speech so i'm actually doing these slides in reverse order because i wanted to start out uh, just explaining what text to speech is which is in most cases when we talk about text to speech we're talking about applications and programs that support a multimodal approach to reading where students are hearing the words read out loud, and they're also seeing them highlighted on the screen simultaneously. And one of the great benefits of this type of reading that we have found from research is that it reduces the burden on students of decoding words and allows them to really focus on comprehension. And this is especially important for students with various reading challenges. It also allows a lot of customization. So students can really customize their reading experience to make it work for them. They can select a font that they like, the size that they want the text to be, the color scheme. <clears throat> they can select from different voice options and that's part of the benefit of knowing about a wide range of reading tools because they're gonna have different voices and uh, there's a, definitely a voice that will work for each student. And they can also slow down or speed up the rate of speech. They can repeat sentences and paragraphs as needed easily with text-to-speech. Uh, and many of the tools that support text-to-speech reading also allow students to add their own highlighting, bookmark text, look up words in the dictionary, and even add notes to the text too. So a lot of uh, great study tools. And going back now to the previous slide, where we focus on the research that uh, has been done around text-to-speech. Quite a lot of, re of research has been done. And one of the things that, uh, that <clears throat> the research has discovered or shown to us is how much this mode of reading, this multimodal reading, because of its, it's more engaging, uh, because it has a lot of customization options, really does improve uh, students' uh, skills in a number of areas. So specifically their phonological awareness, their word recognition, their verbal knowledge and vocabulary, their reading rate, their narrative understanding, reading retention, and reading motivation. Another study found that students access twice as much text within the same amount of time using text-to-speech than when reading on paper. So just the sheer volume of the content they're able to read uh, improves. So those are some of the benefits of Texas Beach. Uh, Miranda's gonna show us a couple, uh, talk, talk through some of these human narrated audio book options and show you a couple, and then I'll be back to show you some Texas Beach options. 
Great. So um, I wanted to talk about places to find human narrated audiobooks, and we'll talk about the text to speech later, as Christine mentioned. Um, but I wanted to start by talking about Overdrive, which is a company you might be familiar with, um, or you might know them as Libby, which is their app for public libraries, or Sora, which is their app for school libraries. Most public libraries provide access to Libby, um, which has both ebooks and audiobooks. Um, and many schools provide access to Sora. Um, so that is a really great place to find both ebooks and audiobooks. And then, as I'm going to show you um, a bit later, you can actually use the ebooks from Libby and um, have them narrated um, text to speech. Um, Epic is another one um, that students often use um, through teachers. Teachers set up their classes um, to use that ebook service. Um, Learning Ally um, provides um, audiobooks. Um, LibriVox, if you are interested in classics, um, usually older books uh, that are in the public domain. Um, LibriVox is the audio version of um, Project Gutenberg, which might sound familiar. Um, Project Gutenberg provides public domain classics in um, uh, text format where LibriVox has books recorded by volunteers. Um, Audible is probably the best known uh, source of audiobooks um, because. Um, they uh, are part of Amazon, and many, many people buy books through audiobooks through Audible. Tumble books, I'm going to demo. Um, and then the last two are just um, things you might find at your public library that you can use for free. So your library card is going to be your best friend. And of course, I'm going to endorse getting library cards. So now I'm going to demo two of the um, sources that I mentioned here. And in particular, I'm going to show you um, that. Um, you can use um, human narrated audiobooks through um, uh, Sora and through uh, um, Tumblebooks. So I'll take over sharing the screen. One second here. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you Sora, which is um, the public, the school library version of Overdrive. And I mentioned that the public library often has one called Libby. So here I am in my um, Sora library, and I've already checked out an audiobook. Um, and the audiobooks in Sora and Libby have headphones on them, so you know they're audio. And I just want to play um, a snippet from this book, Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus. And you might notice that this is only um, audio. There's no, you're not reading along, you're not seeing the book. Um, so I'll go ahead and play. But he always remembers my name for some reason. I guess I'm pretty memorable. Must be the red hair. All right, so you can see that um, the reader is um, a human reader. And I notice there are also controls so you can change the speed. Some people prefer to listen to audiobooks a little faster or a little slower. Um, and many of them have tools like that to help um, with customizing. The other one I wanted to show you as a common service that schools or public libraries might provide um, is called Tumble Books. And this is for mostly for younger children. Um, and I'm going to play a little snippet of a video that's um, basically a read aloud book. Um, so here we go. This one's called Duck Rabbit. And uh, here, here's the, the book starting up. Um, and you get a little... <laughs> Audio song. I'm gonna I'm gonna forward it a little bit to you to see. Those are ears, silly. It's a duck, and he's about to eat a piece of bread. It's a so you can see on that one that um, on this one that it is actually showing you the text as it narrates um, the book. Okay. So um, those were my two demos, um, and um, you can. Tell the when you listen that it is very much um, human narrated. Great, thank you, Miranda. That that was wonderful. Love those stories. So uh, let's go on and talk about some tools to use uh, for text to speech. And this is a slide containing a list of free tools. And there was a question in the Q and A box about uh, which tools do read text to speech, and this is just a, a small sampling of them. There are others that we could uh, also point you to, but th these are some great tools, some that we have fully vetted and 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 really enjoy. 
Uh, the first is an extension that's available in Chrome, also in Safari, and in the latest Edge browser that's called Read and Write. And that, that I'm actually going to demonstrate a little bit later. Uh, also, the Microsoft Word uh, system has a tool called Immersive Reader. I'm going to demonstrate that as well. I'm going to show you a short video about Dolphin Easy Reader, which is an app that works on iOS devices, Android devices, and they also have a Windows version. The Windows version is actually paid, but the two versions for mobile devices is, are, are free. Uh, Captive Voice is another wonderful app that has a web-based version and an iOS version. They have a free version of both of those and then a paid one that you can upgrade to if you want more features. Books, the Books app on the iOS devices, basically iPads and iPhones, as well as on Mac computers, this is a, a, an app that comes pre-installed on those devices, and it is also a wonderful reading experience and co combined with the, um, the functionality in the tool as well as different features in those devices can make for a really great uh, reading experience for students. And then a new, relatively new reader I wanted to make, ter, make sure to mention is called the Thorium Reader. It's actually a Windows extension. Uh, so it's a Microsoft, basically, um, it's limited to the Microsoft environment, but you can get it for Edge. And then you can access, con if you upload EPUB books or materials to that reader, it will read them out loud and highlight the words. And it's a free tool, so uh, very worth checking out. And then we have a selection of paid tools here. They have, uh, they have a very, they vary widely in terms of how much they cost, but they're all worth uh, exploring. <clears throat> One uh, snap and read actually, uh, Miranda's going to show in a little bit how it works with the OverDrive books, but that too is an extension that's also available in Chrome, Safari, or the latest Edge, and it's a small subscription for that tool. And then I mentioned Read and Write, which uh, is free and has a has a paid version that also has more features. And then they, they have a version that's also for tablets and for Windows. Um, so you can check those out. Voice Dream Reader is a wonderful app that a lot of students enjoy and it can be used with, uh, can be also um, access content in a Google Drive and other types of platforms. And it's for iPads, iPhones and Android tablets and phones. Uh, again, Captive Voice, and then Open Lore is a reader that is a text-to-speech reader worth checking out, and Kurzweil offers a, a suite of tools that are worth investigating uh, to read on a lot of different devices and for students who are uh, using multiple platforms uh, to read, so that's worth checking out as well. So, and then just some sources of books that work with those readers. I mentioned that many of those tools read websites read web-based content or Google Docs or other content um, along those lines, but they'll also read books and other materials that you find, articles and such that you might access either uh, from your regular sources or from something like the Gale database, Project Gutenberg, which is the massive public free library, uh, online library that allows you to download eBooks, mostly a lot of classics. And then I do want to mention Bookshare, which is an ebook library for students who read differently because of something like a, a dyslexia or a visual impairment or a physical disability. And that allows students to read in ways that work for them. It is free for all qualified U.S. students. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. So now we're going to get, jump back into some demonstrations. And uh, Miranda is actually going to start first with a demonstration of an overdrive ebook, so a text based book, but adding that snap and read tool on top of it uh, to make it to turn it into a text to speech uh, experience. So take it away, Miranda. Great, thank you. So um, we looked at the uh, OverDrive books um, that are audio only, um, but now I wanted to show you one that is text. So um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you. Multnomah County has um, our ebooks and audiobooks here, um, and you can access through the Libby app or the OverDrive app or on your desktop. And that is the one I'm going to use to show you the text based book. So um, here I am. Um, I wanted to borrow the book um, Hidden Figures, um, and it's not an audiobook, um, but when I go to read it in my browser, 
um, I can get the text of the book and open that up. So you can see that the text of that book is right here. And I have an extension, a Chrome extension on my Chrome browser called Snap and Read. And that is one that my school district pays for, for students to have um, these accessibility tools. And when I use that, um, along with um, the OverDrive books, I'm able to turn this on and we'll just listen to a sentence. The newspaper ad caught the attention of many women. It read, reduce your household duties. Women who are not afraid to roll up their sleeves and do jobs previously. Okay, so as you can hear, um, that is a text-to-speech voice, but it gives me access to a huge, huge number of um, books and that are on um, uh, OverDrive. Great. Thank you, Miranda. And uh, now I'm going to share my screen and show uh, a book being read with the Read and Write extension, which is similar to the one Miranda showed that was Snap and Read that's available in Chrome, also in Safari and in e the latest Edge browser as is Read and Write. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, this is gonna be a demonstration of Read and Write, which is an extension, as I mentioned, that's available in Chrome, Safari and the new Edge. And it's a purple puzzle piece. When you have it enabled, it sits in the top of your website. It's a purple puzzle piece, which I've already selected, and it's brought up this toolbar here. I want to point out that many of the features on the right side are actually part of the free trial, and they go away at the end of the free trial. But the features on the left, including the tool that we need to read text out loud, will remain available once the free trial has ended. So. We definitely recommend this tool and you might also consider looking into whether it's a, a worthwhile investment uh, to keep the paid features, uh, which include things like the ability to add students own highlighting to text, uh, the ability to build a vocabulary list and some other features. So definitely check out the full functionality of the tool, but the reading part does remain even after the free trial is over. I'm just going to select a paragraph of text to read and then plus press the play button. Small mistakes could turn into disasters. Funny little mistakes could snowball so that while you were still smiling at the humor, you could find yourself looking at... Okay, so that's an example of a sentence being read in the with the read and write extension that I'm using on top of Bookshare Web Reader. But again, it can work with any web-based content. It just takes the text that's static and turns it into something a little more engaging and interesting for the students, allowing them to follow along with the highlighting and the audio. And that can really help build comprehension, as we've discussed, and other, uh, other skills as well. So that's read and write. Now I'm going to jump over and show you the immersive reader tool in Word. And I've opened up Word Online because my desktop version of Microsoft Word is not the latest version and doesn't have the immersive reader in it. However, everyone can access Word Online. You just, I just literally type in Word Online in the browser search bar and it brings up a link and I select that link and I log into my Microsoft account. And then I'm in my OneDrive and I've uploaded, it turns out I've uploaded some Bookshare books that I had downloaded as Word documents, and all Bookshare books are available that way as Word documents. So I've uploaded A Wrinkle in Time to my OneDrive, and I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then what I do to get to the Immersive Reader is I select the View tab here, and then here is the Immersive Reader. So under View, you'll see Immersive Reader, and it opens it up in this wonderful reading tool. And I want to point out a couple of nice features about this tool. One is uh, that certain, certainly students have all the customization they have with other similar tools, like the ability to make the font size larger, to change the color scheme. But in this one, it has some additional features, like the ability to show parts of speech in different colors. So I have all nouns, showing up in purple and all verbs showing up in red. I can change the colors for those if I want. I can also have adjectives and adverbs showing in different colors, you know, good way for, again, students to learn the parts of speech. 
and then I can actually turn off or on the ability to have words divided into syllables and that's another nice uh, learning mechanism for students. And then I can make it so that only one line of text reads at a time or a few lines if that's a, a, a benefit to students to really help them stay focused. And lastly, this tool has a picture dictionary and this is a very nice feature has the ability if you click on any of the words you get a picture of uh, of that particular word so it's a great way for students to to learn vocabulary so now I'm just going to indicate where I want it to start reading and I'm going to press the play button it was a dark and stormy night in her attic bedroom Margaret Marie wrapped in an old patchwork quilt sat on the foot of her bed and what okay so that's a really nice voice it is highlighting one word at a time and again this is free this is a tool that's available in Microsoft Word or in the online version of Word if it's not in your desktop version it's available to anyone all you have to do is sign into a Microsoft account to be able to access your OneDrive and then get into the immersive reader and then you have all this great functionality so these are two tools that we really love to highlight in addition to others to make the reading experience more engaging and more interesting for students. I'm going to now show a clip of a video about an easy reader. This is a tool that uh, reads a lot of content. Access your favorite libraries with the free Easy Reader app. Browse for a new bestseller or search for an old favorite. Follow along with perfectly synchronized text. It was the best time of day, the July sky cloudless, Change the text size, pick a color, add a highlight, or tweak the speed. The July sky cloudless, the slowly setting sun, a spotlight on the east. Get your newspapers delivered direct. Or copy and paste text from anywhere and Easy Reader will read it. Los Angeles is a sprawling Southern California city and the center of the nation's film and television industry. Download Easy Reader from the App Store now. Easy Reader, a better way to read. Dolphin Easy Reader is an app that uh, can work on iOS and Android devices and allow uh, students to access content and have it read out loud to them. And it has a lot of great features, including the ability to resize the text with just a finger pinch and select different fonts and different voices. And again, it can uh, really make it possible for them to, uh, to really learn uh, read anywhere. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the slides. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk briefly about Bookshare. It's an ebook library for students who read differently. As I mentioned, it's free. It's funded by the US Department of Education. It makes reading easier for students with reading barriers and allows them to read in ways that work for them. And they can listen to books, uh, read aloud, or follow along with the highlighted text as we were demonstrating. They can read in large type or braille. Uh, the Bookshare collection contains more than 900,000 titles, uh, textbooks, periodicals, all the books that typically students need for school, both for assigned reading and then for pleasure reading, which we hope that they will uh, adopt and uh, learn that reading is something that, that can actually be enjoyable. And they can also get lots of how-to books there as well. So uh, lots of great content uh, for them to access. To sign up, uh, you can go to bookshare.org and select sign up and then organizational for a school account. I have, have an article here that I've linked you to that shows you how to determine which of your students qualify and you, you can add qualified students to your account, assign books to them, and then the students access the books. Students can also sign up for an individual membership uh, separate and apart from a school. And actually the best method, the best scenario is when a, school, a student is on a school account and signs up for Bookshare uh, that way, or the, the teacher signs them up and then also gets them that individual membership so that they can access content on their own, but teachers can also share books with them. So that's kind of the best model. And there's an Educators Get Started guide on our website. I've provided the link here that can walk you through all the steps of, of getting started. 
And then uh, currently on the Bookshare website, there is some great content for learning at home. So if you go to the Bookshare, bookshare.org, and you'll see uh, right at the very top, back to school resources. So check that out. A lot of great uh, tips and tricks and content there. And then uh, the collection also includes 10,000 freely available books, which can be read by anyone, not just Bookshare members. So we have some instructions on our school closures page of our website for how to access that those 10,000 freely available books uh, that can be enjoyed by, by anyone. And I'm going to let Miranda talk briefly about how Bookshare is helping students uh, in, in, your, in her district. Great, thank you. Um, so I heard about Bookshare a few years ago when I started um, my job in my school district as a district librarian and looking for sources of um, um, audiobooks, um, especially for textbooks and things like that, where you can't just go buy an audiobook. Um, and when I found out about Bookshare, I was so excited because um, it's free to students who qualify and we're able to manage it through our district. So I can sign students up after I find out that they do qualify for access and then um, add books to their account. Um, I can also invite their um, parents and guardians to manage their accounts so that they can help students. I've gone into whole classes um, of students who, who qualify for, for Bookshare. And right there in class, I'm adding books to their account and saying, what's your favorite book? Let's put it on there. And they are so excited about that. Um, I have one um little girl, although it's been a few years now, so she's in middle school, who when she first got her account would email me to say, can I have this book? And she is such a voracious reader. Um, and uh, she still emails me and I don't quite have the heart to tell her, well, you know, you could ask your mom or dad to add the book because I really enjoy seeing what she wants to read. And what's lovely too, is that um, unlike some of our other eBooks um, and audiobooks. I never have to say that book is all checked out and you can't have it now or you have to wait. Um, so it's a really, really great option for students um, who qualify for the, the Bookshare service and for schools that want to provide that access. Awesome, thank you. I'm actually gonna sh show a short um, video about Bookshare. Uh, let me bring that up here. Inside every book is a new world and nothing should keep you from exploring. Whether you're learning to read, studying for an exam, or just having fun, Bookshare helps you read in ways that work for you. Choose your favorite high quality voice and listen to your books. Stay focused with karaoke style text highlights. Adjust text to your perfect size, speed, color, and contrast. Choose from our huge collection of titles ready to read on nearly any device. And the best part, it's free for US students who qualify and less than a dollar a week for qualified adults. So start reading in ways that work for you and explore new worlds with Bookshare. Great, all right, just a little uh, quick video for you there. So I believe uh, we are now at the point that we can take questions, but let me make sure we got through Oh, actually, sorry, Miranda was going to go through some tips for building an e-reading community. Let's cover those first, and then we'll take questions. Okay, great. Um, and I'll be, I'll be quick with this because um, I know that um, Christine can talk about the question that we're getting um, of how do you qualify for Bookshare. So um, I think there's a, an impression among adults or teachers that students really only want print books and that... Um, uh, audiobooks don't qualify or somehow using text to speech or um, listening to the audio is not um, as helpful as reading without um, audio. Um, but I think we're that's changing. Um, and we one way we can create a culture where that's encouraged and not just okay is to um, talk about as teachers, as adults, um, how much we enjoy audiobooks and when we listen to them. You know, I, I tell my students when I'm gardening, when I'm walking, I love listening to audiobooks when I'm in my car on a long drive trip. 
um, just so students know that listening to audio is pleasurable and it is um, one way to read and access information. Um, I've talked to students who um, prefer to have their textbooks as text to speech and will speed it up, um, you know, play it at double speed and just get all of that information that they need. Um, so, uh, and I also encourage teachers in the classroom to say to students who, when they have independent reading time in class, to listen if they want um, as another option. It, it is a normal part of lear learning and it is another way to access books and information. Awesome. Thank you, Miranda. So uh, there was a question about qualifying for Bookshare. And so we do have information on the website, but what I'm going to do is share my screen really quick and uh, show you a slide. The Bookshare operates under copyright law, and it is a, an exception to copyright law that makes it legal for us to distribute books. So it's copyright law that really determines the qualifications for Bookshare. So I hope you can see this. I have up on the screen a slide uh, that just basically has the text of the law that determines eligibility for Bookshare. And it's a recently revised copyright law exception, actually. And it just says an eligible person is one who's either blind or has a visual impairment or perceptual or reading disability that renders them unable to read printed works to substantially the same degree as a person without an impairment or disability or is otherwise unable through physical disability to hold or manipulate a book, et cetera. And the decision is really made by what the law calls a competent authority, who's someone, it just says, who has experience in making such determinations. And we also have a cross qualification with Learning Ally and the National Library Service for the Blind and, and Print Disabled so that if someone has a membership with one of those two organizations, they can use that as a basis to qualify for Bookshare. So this is basically what the law says and we just uh, provide this to you and, and ask you to make your best determination about each student if there is a condition, uh, if they have a condition that uh, limits their ability to read or process a uh, printed text. So that those are the qualifications and there's a lot more information about that on the Bookshare website. Okay, Laura, I'm assuming we have some other questions that we can answer. Yes, uh, what I will do is go through the questions that people had answered and one of you, um, either I can answer it or one of you could answer. Um, some of them might have been answered through the presentation, someone asked, what are some good text-to-speech apps? So I think that was covered pretty well uh, in the presentation. Um, there's another question that in their experience with te text-to-speech, most of the voices are still sounding very computerized and digital. Are there any resources for more natural voices, especially for the iPad? And yes, uh, there are voices that you can purchase and depending on which app you're using. Um, the different mobile apps have great, um, you know, a lot more higher quality voices, male, female, male, female voices, different accents. Um, so that is a way of having more naturally sounding voices. Can I, add, can I add something on that note too, Laura? Sure. So on the note of voices, uh, this is obviously a common question about text-to-speech. And I will say that the voices are getting better and better, and that also that these that our students today are very accustomed to uh, hearing Siri and Alexa and a lot of other digital voices. And we believe that the voices are going to continue to become more and more natural. We played, I think, some of the better ones today, the read and write tool on the uh, on the website using that with the website has some great options and then also the Microsoft immersive reader voice is very natural sounding and then so we we just suggest you keep trying different tools uh, keep trying different voices because we do believe that there are, are some that students will feel comfortable with but it's a very subjective thing so um, so that's what I would say about that great um, someone is asking if there is a free uh, type of snap and read or I guess something similar. Uh, there is a free version of read and write, it, uh, which is a similar extension with Chrome. Um, it does not have all of the same features as the paid version, um, but there is a basic version that's available for free. Uh, someone is asking if snap and read will work with Libby. Okay, so um, 
Snap and Read will work with the um, desktop version or the classic version of Overdrive. Libby and Sora are the apps. So if you go to your library site and you use the desktop or, or classic version, Snap and Read will work with that. Um, and then I just wanted to comment that Read and Write for Chrome is the free version is what my district used before we purchased um, Snap and Read because the free version does allow you to do the text to speech. There's some other features that um, are not enabled for the free users, but you can do the text to speech for free with that Chrome extension. Great, thank you. Uh, there's a question about Bookshare. Is Bookshare free for schools in the US? Yes, Bookshare is free for schools, uh, K-12, uh, college level, post-secondary, um, adult education programs, all can sign up for a Bookshare organizational account. Um, the second part of the question, is a tutor eligible to sign up for Bookshare? And yes, if you're a tutor, and you work with students who uh, qualify for Bookshare, you can create an account um, for, for your students. Uh, just reading through the questions, see if there's any duplicates. Someone's asking if Bookshare books are available outside the US. Yes, Bookshare is available internationally. We have members around the world. Uh, different books are available in different countries based on the copyright laws um, of the country and the publisher's um, rights, but uh, mem we have members all around the world. Another question, if an organizational account costs money, no um, accounts. Bookshare are free for schools and students who qualify. Uh, do the extensions have human voice readers? Now the extensions are text-to-speech, so I'll use the computer uh, synthesized voice. Uh, within these apps and programs, are there ways to access text based on reading level? Uh, I know with Bookshare, our books are categorized by grade level. Um, I'm not sure, you know, the other programs are simply the reading tools. They don't contain the actual content. Uh, can you tell me more about the app that allows you to highlight nouns, verbs, pronunciation, adding pictures that go along with the words? That's a great idea. I believe, Christine, that was uh, boring. Yes, I can address that. That's Immersive Reader, and it's in the Microsoft Word tool. And you may have it in your desktop version of Word, but if you don't, you'll have it. In, you can access it in Word Online. And so I literally just open a browser and type in Word Online and I get a link, and then there I can log into my Microsoft account, get to my OneDrive, and I've uploaded the Word document to my OneDrive, and then I uh, open up the Word document, and in the v then it looks very much like Microsoft Word, and then in the View tab, you'll see Immersive Reader, and that's where you can access all those features, like the ability to uh, have a certain parts of speech in different colors, and uh, again, it's a great voice. There's some... Um, uh, good options as far as customization. So yes, we think it's a wonderful tool and it is free and it's available uh, for everyone to use. Great. Uh, there's a question about which reading resource students appear to prefer more over than others. Um, what we found is that's really, really individual um, depending on the student. So sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes the way the text is displayed makes a big difference for gaining the student's interest. Sometimes it's the voice. Uh, so there's really not one um, that people prefer over the other. It's as different as the students are. Uh, and Laura, just to add, just add, I'm sorry, just to oh, add sorry. to that, Miranda mentioned it, I think, as far as in the in terms of building an e-reading community, that we really strongly encourage you to have your students be your testers, have them try out tools, have them uh, record the pros and cons, what they like and didn't like about tools, and have them share it out with other students. And you can do that as part of your 
online learning time or they're sharing uh, little uh, tidbits or things that they like or don't like about different tools and you can give them the opportunity to try them out and share their learning experience with other students. And to that, I would just add too, um, all the text-to-speech um, tools will let students customize, like they can choose the voice. Would they like a, a male voice, a female voice? What um, uh, accent do they like? Um, they can speed it up or slow it down, change the pitch. They can change the highlight color. There are so many ways for them to customize to find out what it is that they like and have their own settings. Great. Uh, there's a question um, if Bookshare is available in zero to three programs, Head Start, early in intervention programs. Yes, the library does contain pre-K books and a bunch of picture books. Um, there's another question about if there's picture books. Yes, many of the books have images. And there's a, a nice collection of uh, picture books for uh, very you know, early readers. We were informed that listening is not reading. What are your views about it? Can listening replace reading? Oh, that's an excellent question. Christine, I, oh, I'm sure Christine can talk about some of the research and, and um, but just in my opinion, we need to accept and, and not, I think listening is different, but um, it is a way an excellent way to get the content. It's a very pleasurable way to get information. Um, so I do, if a teacher says, but it's kind of cheating to listen to the book, um, I'll try to have a conversation with them about that. Like, what, what is it that you're trying to teach? Are you wanting them to get the content? Are you wanting them to become lifelong readers? What is it that, um, what's the goal? Absolutely. And then I would add, too, that the principles of universal design for learning stress the importance of delivering content in different formats for different learning styles and that uh, students learn differently. And, and there you know, are definitely students who learn best in audio. They actually retain information better. They comprehend it better. Uh, and in fact, we showed the research on the text to speech reading where they are following along with the text, but a lot of it is that the fact that they're hearing it pronounced for them, they don't have to focus so much on, they don't have to struggle to decode each word. They can really focus on comprehension. There are going to be uh, other situations where they can work on decoding, but reading, uh, reading a book, for example, to, uh, to gain comprehension, is a whole different objective, but there are definitely learners who learn best in audio. And I think that's part of the, uh, the goal of, of an educator is to find um, the learning style that works best for each student. I know it's a lot of work. The whole idea of differentiated instruction is, uh, is kind of exhausting to think about, especially in the current climate. Uh, but these are tools that can really support that and give students options. And like Miranda talked about, Earlier on, reading should be fun. It shouldn't be boring. It shouldn't be something uh, kids dread. And if you can find the right situation for them, oftentimes it changes the, the calculus for them uh, to allow them to, to start to enjoy the experience. Great, thank you. Uh, there's a question, is Learning Ally and Bookshare the same? Uh, they're both um, ebook libraries. Learning Ally has the human narrated uh, speech, and Bookshare uses the text to speech. Um, that allows the Bookshare collection to have over 900,000 900, titles, because obviously it's much easier to do a text to speech version of a book than a human actually um, reading the book. They're both you know, great options for students. Would a parent need to create an individualized account or does this have to go through the school account? Uh, there's two types of accounts. Um, a student can be um, on their school account that their teacher adds them to the account. And then if they would like an individual account that either the teacher or the parent can initiate that, um, it's still free for the student. The benefit of having the individual account added on to the school account is then the student can read any book from the Bookshare collection. If they are just on the school account, they can read what their teacher assigns for them. 
So with the two, um, if the student has both accounts, they, they kind of get the best of both worlds. They get their books assigned to them through the, from their teachers and they can look through the collection and select a book that they would like to read. Um, also a question about if uh, Bookshare can be used in college. Yes, um, you know, in college, uh, typically the students are over 18, so they can create their own account. Or if the college has an account, um, which many do, they can be added to that account. So again, it's up to um, the student's preference. Is there a program that you can record your own audio for a story and then see the book online? So what I would say to that is, um, you, so you could have a student could have an ebook version and then having the teacher read it out loud to them. Do be careful about copyright. Um, like you wouldn't want to read a book aloud and then post that publicly um, because that would could be an issue. Um, as we're in the pandemic and doing face to face teaching digitally, um, it gets a little less clear because um, you know, there are lots of, of um, book read alouds posted on YouTube and they're probably fine. <laughs> um, I'm not a lawyer, but I would say keep it in your, your digital classroom and contain it. And, um, you know, if you're doing a read aloud, do it for your students. Um, someone asked if students have access to textbooks, if their school has Bookshare. Yes, the, the Bookshare collection contains um, many, many textbooks. One thing that's really nice, too, is we can request things that aren't in Bookshare. So if we adopt a new textbook and notice, oh, they don't have it yet, or a student asked for the new book in a series and it's just not there yet, we can put in a request and um, it gets added. And there was a question, Laura, about uh, books in Spanish and or bilingual books. And I wanted to mention that Bookshare does have a very large collection of titles in Spanish. Uh, so they they will be, you know, books that are entirely in Spanish. So not as much for toggling back and forth between English and Spanish. And to read one of those, you'll need a text to speech voice that is in that language. Uh, and many of the tools we showed you or talked about today have Spanish options or, um, you know, other have other options, Portuguese or French or other other language options as well. So you can download if you have a qualified student, you can download a book, a book in Bookshare that's in Spanish and then they can read it with a tool that has a voice in that language. Great. Uh, a question on speed. Is there an option to choose normal speed slash native speed? Um, as far as I know, the different apps, they all, um, you can adjust the speed and the pitch, you know, slower or faster, um, but there's no, there's no normal. It's, you know, everyone, um, for some people hearing it slower is better. Some, some of the kids listen to it super fast. So you just have to, with each, within each app, play around with the, the options for uh, changing the speed of the voice. I would say that the default setting for most of them is somewhere in the middle, like not super fast, not super slow, but um, you can adjust that. Um, does Easy Reader app interact with OverDrive and Sora? I don't believe it does because um, Over, OverDrive, Sora, and Libby have their own format, and um, I don't think you can pull it into um, Easy Reader. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, can a teacher get a book share for their students who qualify even if their school does not have an account? Yes, any teacher, educator, uh, uh, staff person who works with students can create a Bookshare account for their students. Right, and even homeschool, people who are homeschooling as well can create accounts. Uh, if you're homeschooling you know, several students who qualify, you can sign up for an organizational account, or if you're just an, if you've got, if you're a parent of a student 
and you're homeschooling your student, you can uh, sign up for an individual account for your student. Uh, someone asked um, that Miranda talked about kids asking for books and is there a checkout feature or a limit on how many books they can have at once? And I'm thinking that depends on the program. Um, maybe on Bookshare or so from the public library or the school library, there's usually a limit. You can have X number of, of books um, out at one time. And it's what's great is it's easy just to return one and get a different one if you'd like. Um, so you don't have to physically go to the library. You can return it early and get something else. So and those limits are usually fairly high um, for Bookshare. Um, I've never run into a limit. Um, I will assign like, here's here's a big summer reading list and I'll assign it to all my sixth graders. And um, uh, so um, maybe you can speak more to that. Yeah, no, there's no, um, no limit to how long a student has access to a Bookshare book. There's no checkout or expiration date ever. And there's no well, limit on number of copies. You know, 50 people could be reading the same book at the same time. Right, and there's no, um, there is a limit in a, an organizational account um, for the number of books that an account can uh, provide in, in one month, but we'll be happy to increase that if, uh, if you hit that limit. So if you hit it and just contact us, we'll, uh, we'll increase it for you. Uh, but right, there, there is no, and there is no current real checkout system when Miranda talked about students asking for books uh, they just have to, you know, send the teacher an email at this point and say, or, or, you know, talk to them in person or on, on the phone or on zoom or however they're communicating and say, Hey, can you, can you add this book to my, my reading list? And then the teacher can do that, uh, in Bookshare. Exactly. So, um, like a teacher could say to me, could, we're reading, um, a certain book in class. Can you assign the Bookshare copies to all of my students who qualify that are on on, on Bookshare, and I can do that. Um, or stu students request books, um, or if they're really voracious readers and I'm getting a lot of emails, I might say, let's let's work with your parents and, and do a, a, an account where they can set you up with books as well, or you can have more choices and, and you don't have to ask for them each time. Great. Uh, can you recommend how to help students and parents better understand how to use these apps. I feel like there's a learning curve here. Um, yes, that's a great question, especially with the, so many different apps. Uh, Miranda, have you had any any luck um, working with you know, parents or students teaching them how to use the apps? I have, and actually my district, oh, I'm getting a little feedback. Um, they, uh, we have a person in charge of assistive technology, and she will meet individually with students or work with parents. Um, the public libraries for for Libby um, usually have some way to contact them and get a tutorial or um, their videos as well. Um, and the apps are pretty intuitive. Um, Libby and Sora are pretty um, user friendly. Um, but yes, with Bookshare, definitely um, reach out to your school librarian if you've got one um, or um, staff at your school and, and uh, see if they can help you with that. I also, wanted, I also wanted to mention that on the Bookshare website, if, you're, uh, if you go into the Help Center and then click a big box that says Reading Tools, it will take you to a wizard that uh, guides you in, in which tool is appropriate for your device. And then each page about the tool has how-to instructions and a video that can guide them in, in how to use that. And uh, for example, if it's using Read and Write on top of the Bookshare web reader, if it's uh, using the Health and Easy Reader app, there are uh, detailed instructions on those pages. So it's uh, the Help Center and the big button that says Reading Tools, and then follow that through to the specific tool that you're that you're that you're inquiring about. How to choose a suitable audiobook for the students? Is it based on difficulty of the words, the number of the words? Um, can you speak to that? You know, I, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the leveling systems like Lexiles and, and such. Um, I think the best way is to read a little bit or have a student listen to some and, and discuss their comprehension and how they're doing. And I know it's not 
always possible to meet one on one with students to do that and help them select books. Um, but that would that would be the ideal. Um, but because they're audiobooks, um, their vocabulary, their you know comprehension uh, of of verbal uh, information would be more important than their ability to decode or um, to to read the printed words. Great. Uh, what documentation is needed for qualifications? Uh, when the uh, school account is created, uh, we, a bookshare does not require any documentation to be sent in for um, for the school accounts. When the educators add their students to the account, there is a checkbox where they attest that they are only adding um, students who qualify. So that would be students that they know to have a reading barrier, um, that text-to-speech would be beneficial to them. So that's all that's that's needed. For the individual accounts, there is a form called the Proof of Disability form that needs to be signed by um, what the law states a competent authority. It's someone that has professional experience to make that determination. So that could be, um, like in the case of a visual impairment, it could be the ophthalmologist, it could be a, a psychologist, it could be an occupational therapist, an AT specialist, a family doctor, anyone that has um, knowledge and evaluated the person. Um, so then that's the form that needs to be sent in, but that is only for the individual account. Um, not if they're already on a school account and adding the individual account, no further documentation needs to be submitted, but if it's a separate individual account, um, then there is that form. And I just want to add, uh, Laura, and I, th I think we have to wrap up here pretty quick, but I want to add that when a school signs up for Bookshare, they're actually prompted to print and sign and return to us an organization agreement. And part of what that agreement states is that they will have proof of disability on file for their, the students that they put on Bookshare. So if we ever came to them and said, can you explain why this student qualifies for Bookshare, they'd be able to have documentation uh, to show that. So we don't require that you send in the documentation, but we do require that you have it on file so that if we ever came to you and asked about it, uh, you'd be able to produce it. I know we're short on time, but um, as a school person, I usually hear from our special ed teachers. This student has um, an IEP or a 504. They um, have dyslexia, they need this, or whatever it is, and they need this. Um, and then I'll remind them, for example, like an English language learner wouldn't qualify automatically um, as having a print disability be unless they had some other actual print disability because um, having English as a second language is, would, would not be a qualifying factor. So usually I do hear from a special, the special ed department. Okay, and I think, are we at time? Yeah, I think so. All right, and we really appreciate and thank you for attending. There were some great questions. We hope it was helpful. And uh, there's our, um, our website for more information about Bookshare and um, a survey for feedback. Um, and we hope everyone has a great day and good luck with the new school year.